Peace be with you, my dear sisters and brothers. We are in the fifth Sunday of Lent. The first reading taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah explains how God will replace the old covenant of judgment with the new covenant of forgiveness and love. This new uh, or renewed covenant prophesied by Jeremiah has been fulfilled through Jesus, life, death and resurrection. And that covenant, that everlasting covenant made by Jesus Christ on the cross is available for all of us in the Eucharist. This is my message. The biblical writers interpret the word covenant uh, as a relationship with God. The word that is used is berith in Hebrew for covenant. It is a formal agreement or treaty between two parties with uh, each assuming some obligation. So my dear sisters and brothers, covenant is not a mere agreement, not a mere promise, not a mere contract, not a mere treaty, not a mere obligation, nor an oath. Because an agreement and contract is made between things for a particular period and it can be broken. Whereas a covenant is made, made between two human hearts, two human person and it is forever. It cannot be broken. There are two types of uh, covenant expressed uh, by the Deuteronomistic and priestly authors in the Old Testament. One is conditional and the other one is unconditional. The Deuteronomistic author clearly uh, proposed a, a conditional covenant. If you keep the law, you will be blessed. If you break the law, you will be cursed. The priestly author lived in the post exilic uh, uh, period when Israel was well aware that the exile was a punishment for their break of the covenant of Sinai. It is in this situation that uh, the priestly author reinterprets the covenant with Abraham and Noah as unconditional. Abraham as a representative of the Jew uh, and precisely uh, he, he stands for the entire uh, uh, Jewish society that covenant is uh, everlasting everlasting there is no need for another covenant at uh, Sinai what is uh, astounding in the priestly author theology is that he reprojects an everlasting covenant with Noah, a covenant which is not only universal, that is uh, including all human beings, Jews, non-Jews, but also cosmic, that is including trees and animals. So, uh, God punished them with exile, but he loved them. He had taken back again. He remained faithful to his covenant. It is unconditional. There are so many covenant God made with Noah, the covenant made with Noah and uh, sealed with the memorial of a rainbow, memorial sign of rainbow, Abrahamic covenant 
found in Genesis chapter 15 and 17, the covenant was made with Abraham, uh, was sealed with the memorial sign of circumcision. The Mosaic covenant found in Exodus chapter 19 and uh, 24, the covenant was made with uh, Moses and uh, was sealed with uh, memorial sign of blood. The Davidic covenant found in 2 Samuel chapter 7 establishing David and his lineage as the rightful king of Israel and Judah. This covenant was sealed with uh, David with a memorial sign that his kingdom shall never end. After that, after that they have sinned and they lost everything and they are in exile and during that time some prophets like Jeremiah, Ezekiel and second Isaiah promise the new covenant. That's what the first reading is all about. They taught that even though Israel had been punished for their break of covenant, Yahweh was ready to resume covenantal relationship with, with Israel once more. And so they promise in Yahweh's name a new and everlasting covenant with Israel. This covenant is sealed with the writing, the law in the heart. Finally, Jesus of Nazareth will pick up this theme and show that in his person, this promise of new covenant uh, that was prophesied by Jeremiah 31, 31 was being fulfilled in Luke's gospel, chapter 22, 20. So, my dear sisters and brothers, Jesus at the last supper uh, where he says that the cup is the new covenant in his blood and further in epistle to the Hebrews chapter 8 to 10 also refers to the new covenant. So what God wants to achieve through the covenant is not less than making us his sons and daughters so that we experience shalom, wholeness in relationship in which we lack nothing. The nature of the covenant is God takes initiative. I will make, I will establish my covenant. God is the author of the covenant. Second, people need to accept that uh, invitation, that relationship. People have to profess their obedience, loyalty, acceptance of that covenant. What happened in the history of uh, the people of Israel, periodic infidelity. Again and again, they broke the covenant and ran after other gods. Jeremiah 13, 10, they forgot the covenant and they went after another god. Hence, prophets had to challenge them often to return to Yahweh. Come back to me. Come back to me with all your heart. My dear sisters and brothers, every 20 years, the sin and redemption cycle uh, repeated again and again. If you read the book of Judges for 200 years, 200 years, the sin and redemption cycle continued. How? God chose. He established forever a covenant with his people and God blessed them. He blessed them with good things and plenty. God made them prosperous. He gave them the land. God made them prestigious. He gave them the kingdom. God made them powerful. He made his people stronger than any other nation. God made them self-sufficient. They remember. <laughs> Once they are self-sufficient, they remember neither his wonders nor uh, his kindness and mercy and love. They became proud. They did not listen to his voice. They were not faithful. They believed not his word. They suffered. They were uh, handed over to the enemies and they were in exile and they were oppressed and they were suffering. And in exile, they cry out. They cry out to the Lord, Lord, 
this goes on this go, goes on judge after judge after judge after judge okay and in their distress god heard their cry and forgave them god regarded for their affliction and uh, see my dear sisters and brothers they were blessed once again they were prosperous prestigious powerful self sufficient proud unfaithful suffered ah oh, again converted again forgiven again they were blessed again they were going through this that's why jesus had to nail the sin and redemption cycle on the cross once and for all with his blood jesus christ that made but even in their faithlessness god remain hesed the hebrew word translated as loving kindness he remain faithful in his love unfailing love absolutely he was steadfast in his love to his covenant god affirmed his eternal love for all his people yes i i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness i have drawn you jeremiah 31:3 is the hesed love okay he remains faithful many sisters and brothers the jews had three common ways of sealing the covenantal relationship one is by blood second is by meal third is by marriage blood blood is the source of life the sap of life for life of the flesh is in the blood leviticus 17:11 blood played its covenant role through sacrifice pouring the blood of an animal upon the altar brought the offerer into a relationship with god through blood this is what we experience in the eucharist the new and lasting covenant with the whole human race was sealed by the blood of jesus christ the lamb of god at calvary Jesus used the term blood of the covenant Matthew 26:28 when we drink the blood of Jesus at the eucharist his blood flows into our vein and thus we enter into a blood relationship with Jesus who is God's son and the covenant is sealed when you drink from the cup in the eucharist second meal meal uh, is the source of life sharing bread is a sharing life meal is a bond of union we eat food and drink uh, uh, with our friends we settle thorny issues over a cup of tea a meal helps us to reconcile this is what we experience in the eucharist in the eucharist jesus makes himself food and drink take and eat this is my body take and drink this is my blood we eat one bread and drink from one cup and become one with jesus sharing his life and love and the covenant is sealed third marriage is another way of making covenant it brings love marriage brings life it brings life through love the lovers express themselves through meeting through speech through silence through gifts through bodily communion so many sisters and brothers god chose a nom- nomadic gypsy Israel as bride and made a new beautiful his fair lady but uh, Israel abandons and plays harlot with other gods but Yahweh God seeks and seeks and seeks and takes them back again and again and again and makes a new covenant this is what we experience in the celebration of the eucharist okay this is what jesus uh, does in and through the eucharist meeting entrance rite speaking liturgy of the word silence after the homily gift giving the presentation of the gifts bodily union the communion rite this is my body says jesus only a husband would speak such words to his wife god's covenantal love in the eucharist is sealed through blood and that is a marriage communion okay the union of jesus and our soul 
that is that is equal to the marriage communion jesus calls everyone to be his, his covenant partner to enter into his everlasting covenant in the eucharist so my dear sisters and brothers come and eat and drink with jesus to enter into this new and everlasting covenant so eucharist is not an obligation eucharist is falling in love with jesus christ week after week day after day we run to fall in love with jesus christ to meet him to listen to him to be in silence with him and to give gift to him and then have communion so what a wonderful sacrament we have eucharistus covenant so we pray father i freely and fully surrender all things to your love and now O oh, wonderful and holy father creator redeemer and sustainer you are mine i am yours so be it and the covenant which i make in this eucharist let it also be made in heaven amen